So have you ever sat down to mix a song and you started trying to mix it and you just could not figure out how to get the volume balance correct inside of your mix? If that is you, you are in the right place because we're gonna be covering exactly how to get the perfect volume balance every single time in your mix. Before I dive into that though, I want to give to you a free course that's associated with this video covering the basics of how to mix a song A to Z. So I include multi-tracks and everything you can mix alongside me in Logic Pro X and I will We'll do everything in front of you, explain every single step along the way so you can mix like a pro. You can get that free course down below in the first comment on this video or in the description. You can also find a link and get it. Again, it is my free gift to you. Okay, with that said, let's dive into the rest of the video on how to nail your volume balance every single time. The first thing we want to do is actually reduce our volume to zero on all of our tracks, which I've already done. So you can tell all of my tracks, basically negative infinity on the faders. So the second step we want to do is add a, a frequency analyzer on our stereo out. And I'm just going to add this on the output here. I'm going to go find our metering and then go to our multimeter. A couple changes I'm going to make here is I'm going to change this to RMS slow and then the return rate as slow as possible. So four decibels per second. We're going to adjusting the levels of the various elements inside of the mix to be able to make the flat, the flattest curve we can on side of this analyzer. And each analyzer will be a little bit unique, but if you're confused, just use a little pink noise to find out what the curve should look like on your meter, because we're basically trying to match the same frequency energy as pink noise inside of our. So if you don't quite understand that it's okay on logic that will basically be a, sh a curve that's straight across it doesn't matter how loud or quiet it is as long as all every frequency is relatively constant the next step is we're going to go to a louder part of the song it doesn't really matter where and we're just going to i'm going to loop that and i'm going to play it slowly bring elements up one at a time we're going to start with the kick and the snare because those are the most important elements inside of this mix Okay, and then we'll bring up our kick. Vocals, because it's gonna be the next most important item. And then I'm just gonna keep bringing elements up one at a time to get a good balance. I'm gonna put this meter away. We're gonna revisit that at the end here. Okay, so now that we've gotten relatively close with our volume balancing here, what we want to do is pull up our multimeter again. And we're gonna look and see exactly where we're at on this multimeter and how close we are to getting a very balanced mix. So, and then we're just going to adjust different elements of the mix that live in those frequency areas that are either under or over hyped. So I'm telling that the top end is a little bit weak here, and that's normal for most mixes, especially ones that are recorded at home because they're a little bit harder to get a lot of the top end frequencies without really high quality recording equipment, but that's perfectly okay. We can fix that in the mix, but it's just something to be aware of as we're going forward here. So we might have to do a lot more of that with EQ rather than just volume balancing, but we can definitely get a little closer. I boosted the cymbals a little bit, the hi-hat, the vocals a little bit in that area, just so we can fill up that top end of the frequency spectrum reasonably well. So let's keep going here. Let's see what else we have issues with. Honestly, it's pretty good. Uh, so you can see it's kind of living around that minus 40 here on the, the meter. And that's rel really what we want. If you had any big holes in it, you know, for example, if you just lost all of your rhythm guitars, you can tell that kind of five to one K range really suffers a lot without those in there. And so with it in there though, it oh, 
provides that little bridge right in that 500 or so region and adds a lot more glue to the mix overall because that frequency isn't missing from the entire mix. If you liked this and you are interested in more, then I created a free course for you that you can actually take you can mix this entire song with me and just watch me do it from A to Z. You can download these multi-tracks, mix along with me in order to really learn the fundamentals of mixing inside of Logic Pro X. So if you want that, you can find that in a comment, in a link in the first comment of the description of the video. I will see you on the inside of that course here very soon.